But when it comes to, uh, you know, personal wealth or desiring to have certain things, you know, there's there's a, maybe a sense of, well, am I just doing it because I'm pumping my ego or is this just consumerism or, you know, the well, you gotta, objectifying you gotta, things? First of all, you got to strip yourself of all conventional imagery, right? Yeah. All conventional conditioning. So uh, a big reason this question might arise, and you've asked me similar things before. So you're, you're dealing with this conflated concept potentially of uh, wealth means selfishness. Yeah. D do you have that concept? Uh, yeah, I think that sometimes I feel like when I'm shooting for abundance over does, a... Does, does wanting a car per se equate to selfishness? What's the word? Does want equate? Does wanting a car per se equate to selfishness? Oh, got it. There's there's some conflictedness around the type of car. You mean if I have a car, a means with which to go from point A to point B? No, but if that okay. So, but if you if it's a nice car, then it's ego. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> okay. kind of how. Yeah, I feel like yeah, that's I'm I'm just pumping my ego, or like, do I deserve to have that? I mean, there's a whole so who, like internal dialogue that goes through of like, you know, how, why can't I? Why am I attached to this? It's sort of a questioning thing versus it's okay to have things. Mm -hmm. So, who gave you that idea? Uh, myself, obviously, to a certain degree. Um, I think there's some social conditioning. I think there's a lot of. Um, uh, social justice issues that come up in my awareness, some of which resonate, some of which doesn't. And so there's a conflictedness of trying to be, you know, when I think about living the heroic life and being in integrity and alignment. Do you know what you it know, feels, do you know what it feels like to be heroic? Yes. Cool. So when you're in that state, do you have this question? No. And if you're in this state and suddenly you're really inspired to get a Ferrari, does this question arise? No. When you're in this state. No, but I don't think I'm thinking about a Ferrari when I'm in that state. Well, maybe not. So, but, but if you would, then why question it? Hmm. Well, that's why I guess that's why I'm trying to get down to the conflictedness or where the emotional guidance system well, comes in. Well, all this is solved if you become uncompromising in living from your calling. <coughs> it's a natural intelligence that is not intellectual that is not logical. It's just obvious, self-evident. It's before logic. Now, logic can interpret it. It can come to interpretations and conclusions about it intellectually. But when you're living from your calling, you are naturally attracted to what you're attracted to as an extension, as an expression of your calling into the world. Who knows you're not going to reach many more people with a Ferrari than with a basic sedan. You yeah. don't know. Yeah. Like, And I've had to make many unconventional choices that in the public's eye will go against what it means to be of service to others. But when that moment came down to it, and I was in the state of my connectedness, it was obvious to go get that thing. And I didn't question it. Or if I did, it wouldn't end up lasting. And then always in retrospect, I could see what all the ripple effects of getting that thing that in other people's eyes was against service to others or doing that thing that in other people's eyes was against service to others. The whole social conditioning, in retrospect, I could see the intelligence of why I was attracted to that very thing. But it's, it depends on what state you're in. It completely depends on what state you're in. If you are in the state of your calling, that intelligence will attract certain things. If you're in the state of sort of egoic, like belief based conditioned thinking, you're also going to be attracted to certain things, right? So you got you to gotta be able to feel, sense, know with ever greater clarity and purity that energetic distinction between is this attractedness, is this expression coming from me being in the state of my calling? Is it a natural extension of it? Is it the natural intelligence letting me know, go here, do this, do that, say this, da 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 da, regardless of what it looks like? Or do I want this thing because I'm needing for it, I'm craving for it, and I want it for status reasons or whatever. But all these questions are solved if we can energetically be super clear experientially on what it feels like to be in the state of our calling. And not to fool ourselves, not to suddenly be super blind and naive, to still be um, self-critical, if you will, or self 
assessing, self-honest, just purifying. However, when you really are in that state, there's no question about it because it just makes sense. It's the only thing that makes sense and you know it. Then you can question it, but then watch as your frequency drops. Hmm. Hmm. Right? So here I am in my calling. It's like, whoa, Ferrari, I want it right now. And it's like, oh, but why should I want this? It costs a lot of money. Are people going to think? Oh. <laughs> and then I'm in this yeah. dead state. I'm no longer in my calling. Whereas if I'm staying in my calling, then maybe the Ferrari is exactly the best way to express that calling. Because the calling wants to mutate itself. It wants to continue to proliferate. It wants to spread itself around. And sometimes driving around in Ferrari is a better way to do that than driving around in a 30-year-old sedan. It just is sometimes. And you cannot predict that with logical reasons. So you've yeah. got to, from my point of view, I've, I've been very liberated by just trusting the intelligence of my calling. But you've got to know the difference, which takes practice. So, so how do you, when, what signs might come up to you when you say when you're, you, you've, you've, got to, you've got to know energetically? I mean, are there, what little breadcrumbs that'd be like, maybe the little red signal, like, hey, dude, like your ego's bringing you or your hitchhikers and, you know, pulling you in this direction as well, opposed to, to, to it very simply, just check how you feel. Like at the deepest level, not just mood, but like alignment. What does alignment feel like? What does it feel like when you're in the state of being a hero? And when you see other people living that, being heroic, being ready to sacrifice anything at any moment for the right thing. What does that feel like? If you have that feeling when something appeals to you, then it, it has to be a vibrational match. It's physics. That's why, that's like, why the, the, the very beginning of your calling <clears throat> in locating your calling was find a moment in your life. Right. Find you a real it. moment in your life. Why? Because without that grounding of that experience, then it's just conceptual. That's the, that's the North Star, that experience. So, so my concern is in, uh, in moving to a higher vibrational state, you know, is, is the manifestation of the Ferrari just a... Uh, sort of a, a nonlinear or uh, incongruent way of just continuing to evolve. You know, when you, when you I've go to- I've already lost you. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've already lost you. What the hell is the concern? Whether you should get a Ferrari or not? What oh, is oh, the concern? Sorry. I, I get where you're coming from. The concern is, is that, you, that I'm materialistic. Okay, good. I would do some inquiry into that. First of all, getting is we all are. Is your concern whether that's right or wrong, good or bad? You got some moral morality yeah. about it? Yeah. 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 Well, you gotta first get we all are. We live in a material world. And this is, a, this is a bigger topic. This is yeah. a big topic for everyone. Um, and it's one I'm especially fond of because, anyway, it's just been a big part of my life, but it's kind of going against the grain of what society expects or labels right and wrong, good or bad, spiritual or not spiritual, aligned or not aligned, selfish and selfless and so forth. If hypothetically you could remove all the conditioning from your mind right now, from your psyche, from your body, all the conditioning about what is morally okay, what's not okay. How many of those questions would arise and postpone your evolution and your expression when you're in your state of your calling, if you didn't have those beliefs? Very little, if to none. Oh, is that the universe saying I'm let, on Let society <laughs> wash away, <laughs> gone with the wind, fresh, clear, like who is here to judge anyone else? You know, we, sometimes Richard uses the example of like, what if you were just beamed down onto this planet and there's nothing here yet? He uses it in different contexts, but it works for this too, right? If you did not have that social conditioning. And then look at all the questions and concerns that lower your frequency, that lower your alignment to your calling, that make you mistrust where you're coming from. <clears throat> 
when a moment before that you felt naturally elated, naturally aligned. And this natural wisdom navigates on your behalf. It's like, oh, go here, go do that. This is appealing, that's not appealing. It just bounces off of you everything that's not a match to your calling, and it attracts to you everything that is a match. If it's not coming to you, it's because you're not in the right frequency state. It's because you're not living in your calling. If the things that are meant for you are not coming to you, it's because you're not in the frequency of your calling. And vice versa, if you are in the frequency of your calling, nothing can stick that's not true. Just like with Shanna's example, if she was to be uncompromising in that situation, I guarantee her that she'll be navigated out of that company in no time, most likely. And, or maybe the whole company changes, it's possible. <laughs> But something would happen, but it wouldn't stick. The negative stuff, the stuff that doesn't match, would not stick because it can't, physics. And how much of your questions ooh, put you back into this mental collective condition state and then produce so many more questions about how to live an aligned life when you know how to live an aligned life, just like a child does. It's very easy. So... A lot of the things that slow us down are socially conditioned ideas about right and wrong, selfish and selfless. But you can't judge selfishness on its outer aspects, and you cannot judge selflessness on its manifestations. You just can't. Even if you look at the purest sages in all of history, they've had wildly different expressions and lives and lifestyles. Wildly. Some were wealthy, some wore very fancy clothes, others wore absolutely nothing, hardly ate anything at all. They're speaking the same message, they're constituted in the same God realization, but the way that their lives express themselves is wildly different. There's no right or wrong. And, but the societal aspect that's now become internalized and inherited as your own thinking is what slows down so much of this flow that we naturally have available to us as a child. It, it feels like internal warfare on myself. When, right. I, and when I get the, to that conflict. And here's where the quantum leap comes in. Do you trust, 100%, do you trust the state of being heroic? And that everything that you need and that is truly part of that expression will come to you effortlessly. And everything that doesn't match that will be, bounce off of you. If only you are constituted as people living heroic lives. If you were to come from that moment to moment to moment, it would just be part of your consciousness right now. Right now, right now, right now, your every facial interaction with other people would come from that consciousness, from a conscious awareness of your calling. Do you not believe that things would bounce off of you that don't belong to you? And the things that belong to you that, need to rein that you need to reinforce your calling will come to you. If you can make a quantum leap in your trust in your calling versus the trust in the collective that you've internalized as your logical mind, which is not your logical mind, it's your conditioned mind. When we live true to our calling, our conditioned mind gets cleared and our logic goes quantum too. We become much more logical, much more factual, much more intellectually clear. That's my experience anyway. Like I'm much smarter today than I was 10 years ago. Much smarter, like intellectually smarter, logically smarter. My logic is much clearer than it was 10 years ago. So it's not, it's not so much a deal, uh, it's not so much about logic, but it's about the conditioning that infiltrates and distorts that logic. So if you could get rid of that or trust your calling over that, then you will see results and those results will convince you more and more.